Hello everyone and welcome to Around the World in 80 Planes in X-Plane 11. Rather than going around the world in a single aircraft, I've planned a route with 80 legs using 80 different ones, trying to keep the flight time between 1 and 2 hours. Along the way I'm going to showcase all these planes, mostly freeware though with some payware thrown in, and discuss them in a style similar to though not exactly the same as my Rocket Profile series. I'm also going to be testing out different visual settings on each flight in a quest to capture the most beautiful scenes possible so you'll see the look of it change between videos. We begin flying out of Wilmington, North Carolina and head for Detroit in a McDonnell Douglas MD-82, which comes with X-Plane 11. And for a stock plane it's quite excellent. I'm starting at Wilmington because that was the last location in my flight log. I had decided to try to fly a Hawker Hurricane in the midst of Hurricane Florence to see how that would work. It actually flew surprisingly well. I imagine we'll be seeing the Hurricane Leader in the series when we get over to Europe. The MD-80 series airliners are fascinating for a number of reasons, but first and foremost is their pedigree. The design originated as the Douglas DC-9, which had its first flight in 1965. Production ended for the DC-9 in 1982, at which point nearly 1,000 had been built. The MD-80 was first known as the Super-80, and it was a stretched version of the DC-9 that began production in 1979. While the DC-9 carried between 90 and 135 people in a single class for a range of between 1,200 and 1,500 nautical miles, the MD-81, 82, 83, and 88 could carry 130 to 155 in two classes. The difference between the different variants of the MD-80 series was mainly in their range. The 81 could do 1,800 nautical miles, the 82 managed 2,050 nautical miles, while the 83 and 88 could go solidly across the contiguous United States with a 2,550 mile range. But the DC-9 is not really where the lineage of the MD-80 starts. As noted by Kent Wine in his Cockpit Chronicles YouTube video about the MD-80, the airliner retains components from the Douglas DC-3 in the cockpit, including the manual landing gear extension lever and various knobs. And in terms of being an ubiquitous twin-engined airliner, the DC-9 family certainly took the position formerly occupied by the DC-3. The window latching mechanism may have been based on the hatch mechanism on McDonald's Mercury capsule, so there's an obvious space race connection there too. Though probably a lot of other subtle ones in terms of materials and production techniques as DC-9 was developed and improved upon while the companies also worked on lucrative space contracts from the Air Force and NASA. The MD-88, which is the last variant of the series developed and the one most prominently in service, has taken on the nickname Mad Dog based on the MD prefix, that also being the nickname for a cheap wine, the MD-2020. It is also an apt reference to its eyebrow windows, the legacy of older airliners where pilots used those to navigate by the stars, and the fact that the plane is cramped in the cockpit and also surprisingly loud. In the last few years before it retires the plane, Delta Airlines has offered a quick ride to captaincy for anyone willing to fly it. The DC-9s and MD-80 series all use the Pratt & Whitney JT-8D turbofan engine, which was first flown on the Boeing 727 and was also used on the 737 100 and 200. The engine originated as the J-52, which was used in the A-6 Intruder and the A-4 Skyhawk. Volvo licensed the engine design, added afterburners, and resulting engine was used in the Saab 37 Viggen. The early JT-8Ds used in the DC-9 developed between 62 and 70 kN of thrust at maximum, with the Dash 5 being an exception coming in at 54 kN. The JT-8D-200 series used in the MD-80, however, had thrust between 89 and 93 kN, a substantial upgrade that allowed for the greater passenger and fuel load. MD-80 production ended in 1999, after which nearly 1,200 had been built, on top of the nearly 1,000 DC-9s. Another further stretched variant, the MD-90, could carry 172 passengers. It used two IAE V2500 turbofans, which are also used on the Airbus A320, and these could provide 111 kilonewtons of thrust. Despite the higher thrust, the MD-90 cruised at a mere Mach 0.74, or 427 knots compared to Mach 0.8 or 472 knots for the MD-80. Conversely, the MD-95, which became the Boeing 717, 
was actually smaller than the MV-80 and only carried 117 passengers at most. It used the Rolls-Royce BR-715 engines that provided 83 to 95 kilonewtons to allow it to cruise at Mach 0.77 or 444 knots. Only 116 MD-90s and 159 Boeing 717s were built, with production of the DC-9 family finally ending in 2006, though most of the variants are still in service in some fashion. There are a lot of MD-80 stories and incidents given how many were built and how long they've been flying, but since we're headed to Detroit in an MD-82 specifically, the tragic crash of Northwest Airlines Flight 255 in 1987 caught my eye, as all crew and passengers except one died because the crew didn't check the flaps were extended for takeoff. A famous accident that came up in an online course on aircraft structures and materials was Alaska Airlines Flight 261, which lost horizontal stabilizer control because its nut and jack screw had not been properly maintained. In all, the MD-80 has seen 35 hull loss accidents, leading to 1,446 fatalities, which is a fairly good record, likely stemming from the lessons learned from the DC-9, which had a much rougher time. On the bright side, of the 1,191 MD-80s built, nearly 300 are still in service as the plane sees its 40th year since its first flight. Within that time, they have flown millions of flights. And here we are coming into Detroit finally. The logged flight time was ultimately 1.6 hours. Uh, you can see I used the TWA textures. I think those were downloaded uh, off of the xplane.org website. I'm not sure they come with the plane in stock, but I do like the TWA textures. I believe the buildings at Detroit are custom as well, those were downloaded. And Ortho 4XB has been used throughout for the surface textures, so we've had photographic scenery. So this is not the stock scenery. Throughout the entire flight we've been flying over terrain that was uh, basically Ortho 4XP photo scenery, which was available for free. For the most part, I was using Level of Detail 15 because it takes a lot of space to contain all this photo scenery, as we do experience some lag here approaching Detroit, and that's because, well, there are cars on the roads and lots of buildings to render, and clouds. Actually, the clouds have a big impact that I'm gonna try and fix with further experimentation as far as the scenery is concerned. And there we go, we have landed at Detroit Metro Wayne County Airport. Thank you for joining me in this flight between Wilmington and Detroit in the MD-80.